Oh, I cannot bear 
me, yes, yes, Jesus alone. I must achieve all of my troubles. He is a kind, compassionate friend.
doing everything. Okay, good morning, Lisa, everyone. We will open the chat for just Deborah, a few minutes. Um, That's the because sister. we did not get an opportunity to view her. The, the whole, the, uh, you will get a chance to take a, a short viewing, do a short viewing. And after that, um, after that, we will move straight into the service. We, are we have limited chairs. So what I'm going to ask you to just organize yourself in, in, in terms of social distancing. Um, and then after the brief viewing, we will begin the service. Thank you so much. And it should be an abbreviated version of a... Of a service and um, we are restricted as we all know and this is a unique setting in comparison to what we are familiar with but permit me to read in your hearing as I invite you to stand wherever you are seated those who are seated and the others who are standing around I ask for your full attention and participation as we get the service going. 
shall we then stand? I'll read from a few passages, a few verses from the Bible, the word of, of God. First one is St. John 10 and verse number 10. The Bible says, The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. St. John eleven twenty five. 25, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. John 14, 6, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Final text, 1 John 5, 12. He that had the Son had life, and he that had not the Son of God had not life. I think it is still in the morning hour. We're still in the morning section of the day. Um, I'm confirming. Okay, good morning again, everyone. Today we are here to show our final respect and remember the life of our dear brother, Pepe Almando Clark. I'm looking for his AKA, um, and I'm pretty sure that would be Pepe. Uh, Pepe, okay. Um, but permit me to express sincere condolence to the grieving family and those of us who are here to support. Uh, we are all mourners because I strongly embrace the thought shared, borrowed by Martin Luther, shared, and it's powerful. He says that all of us are a part of a main and that no man is an island, but we are all a part of a main. He went on by paraphrasing. He says, one man's death dim diminishes him because he's involved in mankind. I believe that Brother, Brother Clark's death has diminished all of us because all of us, including myself, is included in mankind. And so today as we come, I express condolence to the, the family, Sister Clark and the Clark family. I pray that you will be encourage today in the presence of God that the consoling comforting hand of God will be fully outstretched that you will allow him to embrace you even as you go through very this very difficult hour of laying to rest a husband a father uncle a friend I trust that the service itself will be a vivid reminder of our feeble mortality and in the process, our need for the Savior. It is in this life that we must make it right with God. Having said that, I will invite you then, while standing, to blend together your collective voices in the use of the hymn, Great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not, thy compassion they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. I'm not a singer, and so I'm going to depend heavily on the rest of you to sing with as much energy as you can. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father.
the springtime and the harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin and the peace that endureth. Thine own dear presence to share and to God. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings are mine with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Shall we bow our heads for prayer? Let us pray, Eternal Father, great God of the universe, we come in your presence today, knowing well that you are everywhere. Amen. Even at this very moment, God, we can sense your presence. We ask you to remember us in our struggling, grieving, soaring state, that you will extend your divine hands of mercy and love and grace and your warm embrace of compassion and comfort, and that you will uh, draw nigh to us, God, because you promise to succor us, you promise to comfort us in moments like these. And so I ex ask you now to condescend in the form and presence of your Holy Spirit. And may this service, God, be a very telling and vivid reminder of our individual need to embrace Jesus Christ, the life giver, and Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. May the rest of the service be done decently and in order. May the name of Christ be exalted and magnified. We ask this in Jesus' name. You may be seated. Thank you so much. Thank you. The program, as outlined, will continue uh, with the taking or reading of the first lesson, which will be done by Kevin Clark followed by a special item by Brother McIntyre. And after that, we will have the second lesson by Marilyn McLean. We will have it in that order. Thank you so much. The passage is taken from Revelation 21. One, verse one to seven. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there were no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. Prepare as the bride of war for her husband. And I, and I heard a great voice out of heaven 
saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with me, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and they and be with their God. And God shall wipe away the tears, all the tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor cry, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away, and he, he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him the that that give unto him that is archest of the foundation, fountain of water, of life. Really. He that overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he will shall be my son. This is a portion of God's own Good morning, everyone. There's a place of dust and beauty. No human eyes have ever seen. With gates of pearl and streets paved with gold. It's a land of milk and honey. Oh, it's more than any dream. It's a land of life beyond the crystal sea. Oh, it's a land of life where living is forever. Where no sting of death will claim no victory. We are nothing more than just a passing shadow. Till we reach a land of living beyond the crystal sea. The sun is nothing but a legion in this paradise of green. The Lamb will be the only light we need. It's a moving walls of jasper built by hand and seen. It's a land of life beyond the crystal sea. Oh, it's a land of life where living is forever, where no sting of death will claim no victory. We are nothing more than just a passing shadow till we reach a land of living. Till we reach the land of living beyond the crystal sea. Good morning, everyone. Our second lesson is taken from First Corinthians 51. First Corinthians 15, from verse 51 to 58. Let's us read. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, or the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised in corruptible, and we shall be changed. For it is corruptible must put in corruption, and it is mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on in corruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the same that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin 
is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as we know that our labor is not in vain in the Lord. This is a portion of God's early word. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, we have the section entitled Tributes. I will allow for uh, two individuals to express uh, kind words. Uh, since we don't have any names uh, listed in the program. So we will treat it then as open. And so feel free to, if you are so impressed to, to come and give a tribute. The floor is open for two such. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. I came to know Mr. Clark while I was a very young girl. I was about 11 years old when my parents moved to Montego Hills and they had a home just behind us. And so we became neighbors and very good family friends. I remember in those days, there weren't many vehicles in Salt Spring. And therefore, Mr. Clark was the person who everybody looked to if they should get sick at night. And he would transport them to the hospital and back. I remember that so clearly because that happened frequently with my parents. And then as we went to school, we would try to be ready in the time that we knew he would be going out to work just to get a ride from Mr. Clark. And I would pay frequent visits to his home as a child and was treated like his own child, both by himself and his wife, Sister Clark, who is a very dear, dear, dear friend of mine. She's more like a mother than a friend. And so I am saddened by Mr. Clark's passing. I knew he was ill for a little while, but I was quite surprised when he passed and my whole family is saddened by it they all could not be here this morning but of course they send their condolences and we grieve with you the clark's family because we feel your pain so keep up and cheer up because we know one day all this death and dying will be no more when we welcome jesus who will take us home to live forevermore thank you so much the floor is still open All right, so let us uh, move on. Uh, we will then go to the eulogy, and this will be done by uh, Mr. Clark, son. son. So let us have him. Thank you. You can tell us first. Thank you very much. First, before before I gave the eulogy, I must say, from the bottom of my heart, I I'm assured that my father is as is is rested in peace because he was a good man. He was a decent man and a righteous man. Um, and we all loved him very much. Now, um, eulogy, as we... Um, Pepe Almondo Clark. 
Armando Pepito Clark, affectionately called Peter, was born on February the 1st, 1939, to Timothy Clark and Daisy Richards Clark in the districts of Salt Spring. He got his name as an um, homage to his father, Timothy's re residence in Cuba. Timothy and his sister migrated to Cuba, and after some time, he returned to Jamaica, but his sister remained in Cuba. Pepe is the baby of the couple with two older sisters, Sylvia, who currently resides in Miami, Florida, and Melly, who is now deceased. He grew up in a district of he grew up in the district where he developed a reputation as one with a propensity to perpetrate mischief. So they say. And my father, he told a story that one night, while he was in bed sleeping, between his mother and father, a lady was accosted on the road and she yelled out his name. His father woke up, woke him up and gave him a severe spanking stating that if he did not have a reputation, she would not have called his name. He attended Miss Lynn Basic School, and at the age of seven, he transitioned to the Salt Spring Primary School, and from there, he attended Morgan High School. After high school, he completed a, a apprenticeship in architecture and building. He then worked with his father, who was a carpenter, on several buildings projects around Montego Bay, mainly in Iron Shore community. He was not a great fan of, his, of this line of work, so he migrated to the USA for one year as a farm worker in Florida, Michigan. After his return from the USA, he obtained a driver's license and worked as a commercial truck driver for the Delicious industry. Next, he worked as a commercial bus driver for a few companies on various routes around Montego Bay. He met Ivy McKenzie and they got married in 1974. He then purchased his own automobile which he used as an independent taxi operator at various hotels around Montego Bay. He then purchased a dump truck, which he used as an independent truck operator, supplying building materials to commercial and residential projects. As he got older, he then transitioned back to an independent taxi operator with his own automobile as a duty member at the Half Moon Hotel. Over the years, he was extremely kind and generous person, deeply loved and cared for his family and the community. He then retired to a life of leisure, including traveling to the USA, England. During, this, during his retirement years, he accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior and became a member of the Bottom Road Seventh-day Adventist Church. This truly was an answer to the prayers of his wife and his children for 30 years. He enjoyed attending church worship service, singing hymns with the con congregation as an sole specialist, singing his favorite hymn, Amazing Grace. With his, with his wife and seven children, together, a total of 10 children, Barrington, Barry, Marilyn, spouse Trevor, Yvette, Marva, Dean, Dino, who is deceased, Patricia, Toots, Patrick Browner, Almando, Pala, spouse Elma, Cherry, Delroy, um, spouse Donna Rose, Mabusha, and Samuel, spouse Deborah. He has 25 grandchildren and 22 great-grandchildren. He is also, he is, he is also survived by several, 
by several nieces, nephews, and countless other relatives, and are also friends. He is dearly missed, and may he rest in peace until the resurrection morning. Thank you very much. Okay, we are steadily moving on, and as you know, this is a short version of what would have happened under normal circumstances. <coughs> and having gone through the early portions, portion of the uh, program, we are down to uh, the charge or the sermon or the homily that will be delivered by a very competent and able elder of the bottom road church um i'm sure elder kings the clark has been very much connected to the family over the many years and therefore was asked selected and consented to be here today and to share a word of encouragement from the, from god almighty elder clark is an excellent speaker, one who loves the Lord and has done uh, exceptional work, uh, church work, evangelism, evangelistic work, soul winning work, and has uh, been guided and influenced by the Holy Spirit. Uh, he will allow the Spirit of God to use him today to bring a message of encouragement to our hearts. God's word is always powerful and always encouraging. Before he comes, though, to share that message that God would have laid on him, we will listen to the song of meditation to set the tone and tenor for the spoken word. And this song of meditation will be rendered by Sister Miriam Hutchinson. After Sister Hutchinson, the next voice will be the servant of God. Okay. Not many people know, in fact, not many people know that I was not born in Jamaica. When I came to Jamaica, we, my family, we lived in Montego Hills. And just saying that to you can give you the rest. Being a Seventh-day Adventist, I went to the Bottom Road Church. And there I met Sister Clark and the rest of the family. And living in Montego Hills. So this family is very close to me. In fact, I started calling Mr. Clark Brother Clark. I didn't call him no Mr. Clark. His wife and children belonged to the church. And although he wasn't at that time attending, I saw him as somebody belonging to the church. So for me, he was Brother Clark. And you can uh, understand the joy when I see him stepped in one day and became a part of Bottom Road. I want to say to all his friends and his family today, let us follow in the steps, footsteps of following the Lord and serving the Lord and becoming a part of God's people. Because that day is coming. When God will come to claim his own. And let us all pray to be there along with Brother Clark as we look forward to being with God when he comes. Sister Clark, hold on. You have longed for sweet peace and for faith to increase. And I've earnestly, fervently prayed. But you cannot have rest. Or be perfectly blessed. Until all on the altar is laid. Sometimes I feel so all alone. I feel so far from God and home. I feel just like a child who has lost his way. Then I go to God in prayer. 
He sees my need. He has my plea. Then he speaks to me so tenderly. Come close to God, my child, and he'll come close to you. Come close to God, my child, he'll hear your every plea. Confess your sins to him, my child, he will forgive you with a smile. Confess, come close to God, and he'll come close to you. Is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? Your heart does the spirit control. You can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest as you yield him your body and soul and now I know just what to do when I see my prayers not getting through I'll read his words and let him speak to me then I go to him in prayer he sees my needs he has my plea, then he speaks to me so tenderly. Come close to God, my child, and he'll come close to you. Come close to God, my child, he'll hear your every plea. Confess your sins. To him, my child, he will forgive you with a smile. Come close to God. Come close to God. And he'll come close to you. Thank you very much, Sister Hutchinson. Wonderful song telling us to stay close to God, and he will stay close to us. The truth is God is always near to us. We ought to make sure that we are near to him. Good afternoon, everybody. Not certain what time of the day it is, but good day, everybody. Uh, it's a privilege for us to be here. And I say a privilege because so many others would have liked to be here to pay their last respect to one who they considered great and have influenced their lives in some way or another. And the fact that we are here, therefore, we consider ourselves very privileged to be here. And so I also welcome everyone to this program. I thank our beloved pastor, Pastor Rabbi the Dr. Brown, who is the pastor of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, Salt Spring, District of Churches. One who has been doing a marvelous job since he has been in the district uh, for less than a year. And we thank him for his ministry. We continue to pray for him and continue to support his ministry with the Lord as well. I want to add my words of condolences uh, to the family of our dear brother, uh, Pepe Pepito Almando Clark. Uh, Brother Clark has a few things going for him. Uh, one, he was born in the month of February. And not very many people are born in that month. And those who are not, they generally want to. And those who are, give God thanks for that. So he had the month going for him. Uh, not only that, he has the name, Clark with an E, also going for him as well. And, um, and so he's a man who really was born with a few advantages. But along with that, he also had a great family uh, with him. Uh, he had a great wife in our own elder, Sister Clark. Uh, he had some great children. I probably know most of them, if not all. There's Toots and there's Brona and there is Pala and there is Delhi and there is Mabusha and there is Marva 
I don't know if I'm missing any, but if I miss any, um, then, you know, it's just the mind. I'm getting older. But some great family members with him, and he has extended family as well and friends. And so, Brother Clark has been one who has been very influential in his community. Even before he was a Seventh-day Adventist, uh, he normally still shows respect to the people of God and to God. Uh, there were times we visited his home. He was always kind, very welcoming. And when it comes on to even talking to him about the word of God, he was never disrespectful, at least never in my presence. And then, of course, he gave his heart to the Lord. And though a very humble person, doesn't speak much, but one who enjoyed church. He enjoys a good sermon. He enjoys the fellowship. He enjoys the people of God. And I believe by the grace of God, I have no reason to think otherwise, that he has been faithful to the Lord. And if so, that there is a great reward uh, in store for him. So to the family, I say we need not mourn as those who have no hope. Uh, because we know that the faith that he has in Jesus Christ is not a blind faith. It is a faith that is sure because God has given us enough evidence that he is the true and living God. And what he promises, he will make come to pass. He will allow it to come to pass. He will make it come to pass because he is God. And so I cheer up the family with the words, with the words that the Lord has given us in the Bible. That the day is going to come when Jesus Christ himself will come and the dead in Christ shall rise. And we will meet those who are living, that's the living saints in the air, so that together we can go home to live with the Lord Jesus Christ. For the next few minutes, I ask of you and I will not be long. At least in my mind, I'm hoping it will be just about seven minutes. Uh, but if it goes longer than that, it's probably the clock not working. Uh, so for the next few minutes, we will look at the subject, the best is yet to come. Uh, the best is yet to come our heavenly father we thank you so much for the privilege we have here today to worship you we thank you for life and we thank you for the life that you have given to brother clark we thank you for the individuals that he has influenced in a positive way we thank you for the fact that he has accepted the lord and in so doing have set a right example for his friends and relatives and others to follow we thank you that even as we come today, that we ourselves are still on repentance ground. And we have a chance to make it right if we have not yet done so. We pray that you'll come forth the family, come forth all the friends and relatives and others who are mourning today. May your Holy Spirit, the Comforter, indeed comfort all of us. I pray that you'll take me in charge. That whatever is said and done through the rest of this program will be according to your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The best is yet to come. You know, one of the challenges that we're having with COVID in this country is that there are individuals who have expressed from time to time the inability to pay their last respects to their loved one. I have heard individuals call on the radio and they have expressed how disappointed they are that they are not able to have a good funeral service for the persons who they love. In fact, I have known of individuals who have said that they would love to have a big funeral service. And individuals have joined church just in order that they can have a large funeral service. I have often wondered myself, uh, what is said really at the funeral service of atheists and evolutionists individuals who have no hope for the future i have often wondered what kind of a funeral they have because everything ends with them in the grave whatever they have achieved that's it that's the end of it there is truly no hope for such individuals and, and as i thought about it as i thought about it what about Christians today? What about individuals today who would like to have a funeral service so that the last respect to their loved one is paid in a grand way that others can 
give their tributes and their condolences and, and individuals can comfort the family in, in a way that they can feel comfortable and indeed comforted. I've often wondered what it's like. It's not a good time for individuals to die. And as I thought of Brother Clark, one who is well known in Salt Spring and around the area, one who has been a member of the Remnant Church of God and a great church, one whose family has influenced the church in a very marked way over the years. It's, it's in my mind, it's not a good way, good time to die. But as I thought about it, my mind reflect on a story that I heard some years ago. And every now and then I still recall it. It's a story about of a missionary who went to Africa. He went to Africa and he spent most of his adult years in Africa preaching the word of God. In fact, while in Africa, his wife died and even his children also died while he was in Africa. At a ripe old age, he retired and he was coming back to his home in America. And so he went to the shipping port to board the ship. And when he went there, he also found that the president of the United States was about to board the very same ship that he was boarding. At that time, the president of the United States was Theodore Roosevelt. And a great procession was there. And they bid the president goodbye. But there wasn't much people to bid, as it were, the missionary goodbye. Only a handful of church individuals were there to bid him goodbye. When they went on board the ship, the red carpet was spread out for the president, but no carpet for him. They put the president at the best table. They gave him the best room. He got the best service while he was on the ship. But the missionary, he was tacked at the end of the ship in a back room. Could not afford the luxurious accommodation that the president had. Went back to America. When he reached the port, the red carpet was again laid out for the president Roosevelt carpet for him. When he looked, there was a great procession waiting for the president. Individuals were cheering and clapping and shouting as the president was disembarking the ship. The president came off to a rounding round of applause. And everybody turned their attention to the president. When he came off the ship, there was nobody to greet him. There was no applause. There was no shouting. There was no red carpet that was laid out for him. He was all alone. He had disembarked the ship. And he went briefly to a hotel so that he, the next morning he could take a transportation to his home. Nobody greeted him. There was no welcoming party for him. Went into his hotel room that night. And he cried. He said, Lord, I have spent all my life in Africa. My wife died. My children have died. I have done everything that is humanly possible under the guidance of your Holy Spirit to lead men and women to the truth. I have told them that there is no better way than the way of salvation in Jesus. But Lord, I must tell you, I felt all alone while I was on the ship. I felt left out as I disembarked the ship when nobody came out to greet me. There wasn't even a solitary person to cheer me on. He poured out his heart to God that night. I want to tell you, beloved, that God is not asleep. There's a famous preacher who normally tells us right here in Montego Bay who always said that God does not wear pajamas because God does not go to sleep. God still hears sinner's prayer. Yes. And he still hears the prayer of his people. Yes, sir. That night God was listening to the prayer of a disheartened, depressed missionary. Yes. Discouraged as Elijah was at one time in his, in his own missionary endeavors. Yes, While that preacher prayed and he paused. 
as if in the quietude of the night God responded to him and there was a voice that he heard as clear as day the voice said missionary missionary don't be disheartened missionary missionary don't be sad missionary don't be sad because you're not home yet you're not home yet you're not home yet don't expect a welcoming party because you're not home yet don't expect a grand crescendo for you are not home yet god tells us in the word of god that when a christian dies now that christian is sleeping the christian don't have to have a big funeral service don't have to have great mourners for the christian is just resting in the grave for the day is going to come when that christian is going to awake to a great welcoming party yes, sir. the book of hebrews yes, sir. the book of hebrews chapter 11 tells us quite a bit if you have your bibles i know you may not have but if you do and when you go home i'm going to ask you to turn to it in the book of hebrews chapter 11 the bible lines out for us as it were some of the great saints of old individuals who have dedicated their lives to jesus the bible spoke about abel who was dedicated to god who offered the best sacri the best sacrifice that he could offer he took of the best of his cattle and he offered it to the lord and the bible said that he died he died a very vicious death and he had no great funeral service there was no crescendo of individuals shouting there was no red carpet that was put out for him but the bible said he died not receiving the promise the bible spoke of men like noah who preached the gospel for over 120 years and the people did not listen to noah as he told them about the impending flood only noah and his family were saved but the bible said he died not receiving the great promise of God. The Bible told us of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. And the Bible said that all of these men died not receiving the promise of God. But then the Bible says that these men and women who died, that they died looking for something better. In fact, the Bible said, the Bible said that Abraham when he left the land of Ur of the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan flowing with milk and honey. When he reached the land, individuals thought that Abraham had received the promise that God had given to him. But the Bible said no. Abraham knew this was not the promise. For in the land of Canaan, he dwelt in tents rather than building houses. He lived in a tent as though he was only passing through. Yes. Individuals thought that the land of Canaan was the land that God had promised Abraham. But the Bible said that Abraham looked for a better country. Yes. He looked for a better city yes. whose builder and maker is God. I want to tell you something. That God has promised Christians something better than life on earth. He has promised us something better than a big bank account. He has promised us something better than a huge house. He has promised us something better than an expensive car. Doesn't mean some of us may not get it, but that's not what we are looking for. There is a better promise that God has given to us. Bible said that there is no man who have left father and mother and children and brother and sister who will not receive a hundredfold in this life and in the life to come eternal life. Yes, I want to tell somebody here today yes. that it pays to serve the Lord. Yes. But the Bible tells us why they did not receive the promise. There are some Christians who teach that Abraham is around the throne of God. There are some who teach that David is around the throne of God. But the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 11 that they are not around the throne of God. The Bible says that they have not even received the promise yet. The Bible said that they are resting in the grave. Why are they resting? And that's the point I want to make and close here today. Why are they resting in the grave? 
Why is Brother Clark resting in the grave at this time? Well, the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11. And I read for you one of my favorite passages of scripture. Hebrews chapter 11. And we go to the latter part of that chapter. The Bible says that these all having a good report. Not a good report from man, a good report from God. These all, that's Hebrews 11, 39, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God having provided something better for us that they without us should not be made perfect. I want to tell you something, beloved. God said that I have something bigger in store. I have something bigger and better in store than for me to take the saints one by one into the kingdom of God. He said, that's not what I'm going to do. God said that I want everybody to receive the promise at the same time. Abraham will receive the promise when Brother Clark receives it. Brother Clark is going to receive it when his wife, Sister Clark, receives it. Sister Clark is going to receive it when her children receives it. The Bible says that every saint of God is going to receive the promise at the same time. Why is God doing that? God is planning a big welcoming party for the saints of God. Amen. The Bible said it's going to be so big that all of heaven is going to be empty for that welcoming party. The Bible said that there's going to be silence in heaven because heaven is going to be empty. Jesus is going to leave heaven. The Father is going to leave heaven. The Holy Spirit is already on the earth. The angels are going to leave heaven. The Bible says every single one of them are going to leave heaven because they are planning a grand welcoming party for the saints of God. I don't worry what kind of funeral service I'm going to have. You don't even have to have one for me. I am more interested about my welcoming party because God has a great welcoming party that he has planned for the saints. For the Bible tells me that all heaven will open, with open arms are going to welcome the saints. The day is going to come when we are going to, the Bible says, we are going to say, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him and he will save us. Brother Clark is waiting for that day. I'm waiting for that day too, saints. And you need to wait for that day. I don't know if you have already made sure that your life is right with God. But if not, I'm telling you now is the time for you to do it. Because time is running out. Time is running out. Every one of us will be where Brother Clark is now. Every one of us will be where Brother Clark is now. I say every one of us will be where he is now. Some of us, it might be tonight, today. Others might be sometime this year. And even if it takes another hundred years, all of us are going to be where he is right now. The question is, how ready are you when death comes knocking on your door? How ready are you when death comes knocking on your door, you have a chance to have the greatest welcoming party in history. Or you have the chance to lose out on it. In fact, I say to you, I'm not even going to tell you what the punishment of the wicked is going to be. Because even if there were no punishment for the wicked, just the fact that the ungodly will stand on that great day and see what they miss and see the reward of the saints. No more pay pain. No more tears. No more sorrow. No more death. No more COVID. Better than JPS, better than NWC, better than NHT. 
when they realize what they have missed, it's going to be hell for them. Just seeing what you could have gotten by only saying yes to Jesus. By only saying yes to Jesus. I close by saying, beloved, if in the last couple of days since COVID has broken out, every now and then on the internet, I have seen or read about individuals who have done played the disease. Some say it is nothing. Some say, what is the government doing? We need to go about our business. And every now and then, there is another publication of some of those same persons who had said these things publicly. But this time, it's a testimony from them. Where they themselves have caught the disease. And invariably, every time, these individuals, when they speak about it, they say to others, take it seriously. This disease is serious. If we had only known, we would have taken it seriously. And in many of those cases, the report comes a few days after that some of them have died. What's the point I'm making, beloved? On the great judgment morning, individuals are going to say, if I had known, I would have taken it seriously. I would have taken the sermon seriously. I would have taken the word of God seriously. If I had known, I would have taken the time I was in church seriously. But it's going to be too late at that time. Take the warning now. Today, if you hear my voice, harden not your heart. I believe I will see Brother Clark again. Because by the grace of God, I plan to be faithful to the end. Not by my strength, but through the power of his Holy Spirit. I plan to see him again. I don't know about you, but I plan to see him. And many others who are now resting in the grave who I know. I plan to see them again. Why not plan to see Brother Clark again? Our Heavenly Father, your words have gone forth. May your Holy Spirit take your word. Speak to the hearts of those who are here. May they take heed today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Ella Clark, powerful, powerful message indeed, very timely, and we appreciate the word of, of God, and we should be steadfast in our commitment that we will do all that it takes to ensure that we are able to see Brother Clark again. And God who promised that great meeting cannot, cannot lie. Uh, don't be distracted now. Don't be distracted. I'm going to lift a prayer for the Clark's family. So uh, I'm going to ask those who are uh, not related to stand uh, and those who are related to remain seated thank you so much thank you shall we pray eternal father and friend 
we thank you for the spoken word we thank you for the promises you have made we thank you for the assurance of salvation made possible through Jesus Christ our Lord and friend we ask now in a very special way God that you will remember this Clark's family and while Ella Clark so ably and powerfully declare that brother Clark had so much happening for him the Clark's family have so much happening for them and we rejoice to know that even now they can make their calling and their election sure with almighty God I give each of them to you today that you will embrace them individually and collectively in your warm embrace of love and grace and that you will allow them to know that in spite of the grieving in spite of the loss in spite of the pain in spite of the sorrow you god you are still god seated on the throne so we ask you now eternal father to embrace them to comfort them to draw them closer together in the bond of love and family and help them to know God that only if they would make the right step towards Jesus Christ then all will be well with their soul so we ask that you will guide their path keep them together as a family unit allow nothing to separate or sever them allow no animosity no strife no hatred no malice to divide them but they may be united in the bond of love and help them to press on to the higher calling that is in christ jesus as we segue from this service to the point of burial may your holy spirit continue to guide the process May your name be uplifted and glorified. We ask this in Jesus' name. And we say amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, there is a song. We would have used it if it was at the church. Amazing grace. We will use it when we get to the graveside. And we are already at the graveside. But we will segue from this service to the point of burial. So at this moment, I'm going to ask the pallbearers, those assigned, to come forward. And thank you again, Ella Clark. Without much delay, we will go to the next and the final phase of the proceedings. Thank you so much. I'm not going to 
committal in the sure and certain resurrection at the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who will change this mortal body into immortality and the assurance given is that at the second coming of Jesus Christ brother Clark along with all the saints of all ages will be resurrected and be granted the privilege of spending eternity with Jesus Christ. It is with this assurance 
It is this hope that they lay his body to the ground and pray even to this end that God's eternal will will be done, his divine providence will be wrought, and that they great get to that morning. And so permit me then to say a prayer, asking God's will to be done. Eternal Father and friend, we thank you for the assurance given in your word. We thank you that we don't embrace fables. We thank you that our faith remain resolute in the promises of Almighty God. May you mark this spot of burial, and like you promised, may your will be wrought on that great getting up morning. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, we will be singing while the workmen uh, carry forward the work and complete the process. Now we have the closing hymn, Amazing Grace, and then we have the songs at the, the graveside, our commission, when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound. We do Amazing Grace first, first and last stanza, and then we go to when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound. So we do Amazing Grace first, and then yeah, when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound. First and last time, Somebody will lift it for us and the rest of us will join.
the Clarks family, we just want to extend, as it were, uh, thanks to those who have taken the time out to be a part of the program. You could have been elsewhere, but you have chosen to be here to show your last respect. On behalf of the family, we acknowledge and say thanks to those who have expressed their thanks through calls, visitations, text messages, social media posts, or whatever other means you may have or methods you may have used to express your condolences, your, 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 your thanks for what Brother Clark may have done uh, for you and on your behalf. Express, as it were, your, your comforting words to the family, praying for them, for uh, staying with them, perhaps even singing with them during this time of their bereavement. On behalf of the family, we just want to say thank you very, very much. We know that for some individuals, now is the lonely time. Now is the time that they need an extra call, need an extra hand on the shoulder, um, need an extra prayer. And so we ask that you continue to pray for the family. Some of them are here, some are abroad. But the good news is that prayer reaches you wherever you are. So we ask that you continue to support the family and continue to pray for them. All right, so I think some persons will definitely have to make their way back to the house for uh, to share in the repast. Thank you so much. We have wrapped up proceedings. Let's, let's say where you are, stay where you are, and bow your heads as we say a final prayer. Father, we again pause just to tell you thanks. We, as we're about to depart, may your spirit depart with us and allow us to be mindful always that you are our comforting Father, be left in your hands, the grieving family. We pray that you will continue to succor them, comfort them, shield them, guide them, and carry them even when they are unable to walk by themselves. I commit to you, your daughter, Sister Clark, the matriarch of the family, continue to support and strengthen her physically, emotionally, spiritually, and otherwise. And at last, when you come, may this family join with the saints of ages to hail you as God and friend, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
for the last goodbye There's a smile Though tears dim their eyes Death will take us But only to sleep Broken and 